Whenever you want a liter bike, have you ever wondered why Japanese manufacturers use inline four engine configurations just like the Kawasaki ZX10R and the Yamaha R1, while European manufacturers use V4 engine configurations like the Ducati Panigale V4 and the Aprilia RS V4? Well, let's find out their differences in today's video. Let's start with the inline four. The rise of the inline four motorcycle is tied largely to the massive growth of Japanese manufacturers since the late 1960s. For more than 50 years, there has been the reliable inline four engine. The classic Honda CB754, which many people regard to be the first superbike, is one of the motorcycles that helped this engine layout become well known. The four cylinders of an inline four-cylinder engine are arranged in a straight line or parallel configuration. That's why it's called an inline. This engine, which is available in a 180 degree, which is a flat plane, and a 270 degree, which is a cross plane crankshaft layout, has established itself as a mainstay in the racing industry back then. The inline four was the preferred powertrain for everything from the 1986 Suzuki GSX R1100 and the 1992 Honda CBR 900 R Fireblade to the most recent Yamaha R1. And that also includes the 998cc inline four supercharged Kawasaki Ninja H2, the fastest production motorcycle currently on the market. Inline four engines designed for performance are frequently capable of revving all the way up to 14,000 RPM or even up to a whopping 20,000 RPM by the 250cc inline four engine of the Kawasaki ZX25R. Generate the recognizable scream that has come to be associated with racing which is comparable to the sound made by racing bikes in the 1990s and early 2000s which makes every person shake and feel excited whenever one flies by. An inline 4 is extremely simple to ride even with its enormous power and high speeds, which is why most sport bikes, tourers, and larger capacity machines all often use a transverse inline 4 cylinder engine. In contrast to engines with fewer cylinders, which occasionally have no power stroke, a four-stroke inline four engine always has a cylinder on its power stroke. A straight four engine has one cylinder head instead of two or four in a boxer four engine or a V4 engine, which lowers maintenance complexity and production costs. And inline four engines are known for producing most of their power and torque high up in the rev range. But the problem with inline four engines is that they add width, but not as much as a BMW Boxer or a Mutagut CV twin engine. And they have also been criticized for perhaps seeming a little too bland to ride, although that actually depends on the approach used by particular manufacturers. And it's also undeniable that the inline heyday fours in the racing world are now firmly in the past compared to the V4s. <laughs> And now, let's go to the V4 engine. Because they blend some of the greatest qualities of both the V-twin and an inline four-cylinder engine, many of the most sought-after motorcycles on the planet have V4 engines, like the Panigale and the RS V4. A V4 is often difficult and expensive to construct or manufacture, but with Honda, Ducati, Aprilia, and KTM adding the V4 engine layout in MotoGP, the advantages are evident. Although this design has been produced for so many years, it only recently gained popularity when Ducati and Aprilia started incorporating it into their most popular street bikes. This occurred along with Ducati's enormous success with its new V4 engine in MotoGP and World SBK. A V4 engine, as its name suggests, has four cylinders and two-cylinder banks with two cylinders each. 
Imagine it as two V-twin engines mounted side by side. The power delivery of a V-twin like the Harley-Davidson Iron 883 has a decent spread of power from low in the rev range which makes it incredibly torquey, but it tends to taper off towards the higher limits of the tachometer, as you would know if you were familiar with them. But the V4 engine manages to spin quicker, which delivers greater power over a broader range of RPM while maintaining the same healthy distribution of power and torque. The engine is considerably more compact when the four cylinders are arranged in a V-shape compared to an inline 4 configuration. The V4 configuration is extraordinarily strong, offering levels of rigidity and tensile strength than an inline 4 or even a V-twin simply cannot match. Furthermore, it provides a little length across the crankshaft. Similar to a V-twin, adopting a 90-degree angle results in perfect primary balance and less shaking than an inline 4. This makes a V4 engine ideal for integration into a motorcycle that employs the engine as a stress component. Thus, part of the stresses associated with cornering, accelerating, and of course braking may now be absorbed by the engine. The motorcycle industry has also been stressing the importance of this word for years, which is called center of gravity. And the V4-powered motorcycles have made the most advancements in this area. The compactness of the beast makes it simple for a bike designer to determine where the engine's center of gravity should be placed to provide the desired handling qualities. The drawbacks of a V4 engine on the other hand includes the requirement for twice as many camshafts, two cylinder heads, two exhaust manifolds, and two valve trains compared to an inline 4. That implies that a V4 is expensive to both create and construct which I said a while ago. And that includes heat, which is notorious for Ducati motorcycles, especially because the rear cylinders are located directly under the rider's seat. The last characteristic shared by nearly all V4 motorcycles is the distinctive sound they produce. Compared to the inline 4, the exhaust note is a throaty performance exhaust that sounds like a tiger growling. If you are asking me which engine configuration is the best for you, you must try them yourself in order to decide which configuration is the best for you. So guys, thank you for watching today's video. If you like my videos, make sure to press the like button, make sure to press the subscribe button if you want to follow me on my journey of loving motorcycles, and of course, make sure to press the notification bell. Don't press none. Adios!